Well, I'm Bruce Janey, and today in Homemade Science, I want to look at the classic demonstration of the centripetal swinging tray. Now, originally this demonstration started out just using a bucket. I found reference to it in my great-grandfather's science book that was published in 1850. It explains how and why, when a bucket of water is attached to a string, is whirled rapidly round, the water does not fall out when the mouth is presented downward. Now eventually the demonstration progressed from using a bucket to using a tray, which made it a little bit more visible. It also opened up the opportunity for more variations. All right, we'll start by rocking it back and forth. And they don't move. I just find that amazing. And around. And on the horizontal. I just find this to be an amazing picture. If I rotate it 90 degrees, it looks the same as if the cups were level. Here's a tray that's a little bit bigger. Let's try this one. 15 cups. Of course, everybody wants to try this for themselves, so we have some student versions. This piece was cut out of plywood. It had four holes drilled into it, and the string was knotted in this case. This piece, a little bit larger, is made out of cardboard. It's reinforced with tape, and in this case, the string wasn't knotted. It actually runs from one hole to the next on both sides, and it gives it a little bit more support. Now, we also found handles make it easier to hold, and there's a variety of designs that you could use. Now, when students try this, instead of using a cup of water, I'd have them start with a bottle of water. And once they mastered this, the challenge would be to turn the bottle over and put it on its cap and try it again. We've also tried a number of other objects on the tray. For example, this balancing bird, raw eggs on a support, golf balls sitting on a golf tee, little seesaws, and stacks of coins. The balancing toys remain parallel to the ground when they're sitting upright, but once we start swinging them around, notice that they're parallel to the surface of the tray. Now let's try this small tray. I'll put the golf ball on the tee, swing it around, that worked fairly well. Now with some additional practice, there's some other demonstrations you can try. But these are probably best to be done outside. Now let's try it again, and if I miss, I'm simply watering the grass. Place. Now let's try two revolutions. Oh, look at that. I missed, but it stayed on the tray. I think I'd like to investigate the center of rotation for the swinging tray. Now, in all the years we've been doing this demonstration, the length of the string to the tray is usually about three feet long. For this video, I was wondering if we could go longer. So I made up another one, 
but I haven't tried it yet, so let's go see what happens. All right, let's give this a try. See if I can do one that's seven feet long. Oh, great. All right, now that we're successful at seven feet, I think we can go much longer. In this attempt, I'm gonna try it with a larger container. That's gonna give me more mass, and it's also wider, so I think that's gonna make it a little bit more stable. Okay, I think we're ready to try it from a higher height. In this case, we're at the top of our stadium staircase, and we're gonna try it over the back end. This thing's about 14 feet long. I want to see if this works. Little trouble stopping it, but otherwise that worked fairly well. I want to go get a longer string, and then we'll try it again. The string's now 18 feet. Any longer now, I was afraid I'd hit the ground. This is my third trial at this length, and I can't get it going fast enough. So I'm going to have to try something else. I made a different handle that's going to allow me to change the length of the string as I'm swinging it around. I'll start off with a shorter length, and then once I get it going in complete circles, then I'll simply allow it to get longer. This method has actually worked fairly well. I've gotten it out to that full 18 foot length of string. Pretty good. Now I'm going to have to find another location to see if we can go even longer. Now that we have the vertical, let's see what happens on the horizontal. How long could the string be? I'm hoping others try this and then post the results. At this point, you may be wondering, why does the water stay in the bottom of the cup when we're swinging it around? This bottle, cart, and rubber band can help with part of the explanation. Notice the water level in the cart stationary, and if I were to let it go, what would you expect to happen? Due to inertia, it collects at the back end of the bottle as the cart pushes it forward. In this case, as the trays rotate, the water is also being accelerated, and I have to constantly pull in to keep that tray rotating. So if I spin it fast enough, the centripetal force pushes the water towards my hand. If you'd like more information on this concept, I have a previous video which went into a little bit more depth, and I'll put its address down in the comments below. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video, and as always, I want to thank you for watching. Now in a future video, we'll take a look at a simple activity that students can try to investigate and measure some chip forms. So I hope you'll come back again. Okay, bye.